This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, here in this session, once again, we are going to continue the terms of payment itself. But in that, there is a topic called days limit, which is quite a unique topic that I'm going to cover. You won't be finding anywhere the explanations. If you search on Google, it's giving quite confusing definitions and all. <clears throat> I'll give you a pretty simple example and then we'll explain it. This is a requirement raised by one of my students who is working. He's working as a consultant. And so I thought why not to cover this in live session itself so that because you guys are also going to receive since you guys are also future consultant, you guys also will be receiving or may receive this requirement. So that is why I'm going to cover this in live session itself so that this video will be shared to other people also. Now, so <clears throat> there are lots of things, guys. There are lots of things uh, in every topic. If, if we talk about terms of payment, in terms of payment itself, look at here how many things are there. Already several classes we have, have covered, have given earlier, and still we are having some classes. So there are several things to know. And uh, so if we talk about day limit, where it is, look at this screenshot. Here it is. This is called day limit. So what is the use of this? What is the use of this day limit? Day limit? And even this is a question which is asked by an interviewer recently. Okay. So let me cover this one itself. Now I'll give an example here and then we'll start configurations and all. So configuration part is not much difficult guys. Uh, terms of payment, whichever configurations we have done till now. These all are pretty simple. But the thing is like we need to understand the logic. If you are having proper understanding that from one, this is small fields, isn't it? If you talk about this terms of payment, in this much itself, we are having several different different kind of payment terms can be defined with lots of different different what to say in, in, in different different conditions. Vendors are going to give our customers, whether it is vendor or customers will have a different different conditions. OK, so all conditions are going to be met here in this screen itself, which is why SAP has given lots of small, small fields and every fields are having some uses. Now here this days limit is also or day limit is also important because it is going to be used in real time also. Now, so what is the use of day limit? In previous session, in previous session, I have covered fixed days terms of payment. Right, in fixed days for terms of payment, what I say is guys, let's suppose if you're having a vendor and that vendor says like do one thing, uh, whichever invoices, whichever invoices the vendor is sending or whichever invoices, vendor invoices or customer invoices because terms of payment we are going to define for vendor and customer both. <laughs> now, so whichever invoices is getting posted in a particular month, those invoices will be due on 10th of next month or 5th of next month or 1st of next month, right? Or, or even uh, like 31st of current month itself, even this kind of requirement also may come. So how to configure this terms of payment that is already I explained in the previous session, right? The requirement is, let's suppose Jan month, all the Jan month invoices 
are going to be due on 10th of Feb. Entire February month invoices are going to be 10th of Tenth March, right? So like that, it is all the March month invoices are going to be due on tenth of April, tenth of, or it could be instead of tenth, it could be fifth also, it could be fifteenth also, it could be twenty years also, right? Tenth of next month, tenth of next to next month. So how to set up this terms of payment? I have covered in the previous term, previous what to say this one. Or else, what will happen, guys? Even there is a requirement that there is a requirement that whichever invoices whichever invoices are going to be posted in a complete month that should be due at the end of the month that should be due at the end of the month so what will happen here <coughs> let me log in i think uh, this server is quite slow i'll just do one thing i'm going to log in a different server some technical issues are there. I already have raised the request. So let me log into a different server. Okay. Now, so here I covered this fixed days terms of payment, fixed days terms of payment in the cells. Let's suppose the how to define this terms of payment ob b8 once again i'll repeat let's suppose this is the criteria that all the this one already i've covered yesterday now there is a criteria that all the current month in the sense whatever invoices are posted in entire january that is going to be due on 31st jan okay 31st jan right it, it should be due on 31st jan all the it means at the end of the month 31st in the sense at the end of the month february february it could be 29 or 28 this is also going to be you know that uh, system automatically is going to whichever leap years are there that is going to be uh, you know taken care by system already it's it's because the calendars and everything will be defined by your HR consultant and even I'll show you guys because your standard calendar is already assigned. So I'll show you guys uh, <coughs> how system is going to uh, take automatically this uh, February and all. So now here there is a requirement that let's suppose if you receive any uh, whatever the invoices be, is, are, are being received in January month is going to be is going to be due at the end of the current month itself whatever invoices we are posting in february month that is also going to be due at the end of february itself right again whatever invoices you are posting in march month that is also going to be due at the end of march itself likewise so here first of all what you have to do you have to do one thing and click on Terms of payment, and here we are going to we are going to create a terms of payment. So, say for example, you can give any code. You can give any code. Like, let's suppose I'm going to give like T E S T, or is we can give test one here and what i said that the invoices which is posted in entire january is going to be due on at the end of this this current month so at the end of current month how it is going to happen guys give here 31st right and additional month additional month is not required Additional month is required only if I say like it is going to be due on 
10th of next month so what i said yes in the previous session give your 10 and then here in the additional month we are going to give one but right now i am saying that every invoices whichever is going getting posted in a current month should be due at the end of the current month itself so in means what what is the maximum number of days in a month guys 31 so give here 31 if any month is having 30 days or 29 days or 28 days system is going to consider those things automatically why because the calendars are already standard calendar is here and whenever the implementations are happening hr consultant will take care of these all things so there won't be any there is no there's there's no any impact of this right now here so additional month we are not going to give any additional month and all because additional month is what zero zero doesn't mean anything just one second give you one second guys. Okay, so now here we are given zero. Zero means what? Whether you keep blank or zero, <clears throat> zero means current month, no additional month. Okay, now what about the baseline date? What about the baseline date? Do we need to give a baseline date? Of course, we have to give the baseline date. Why? Because as I told you, let's suppose if the document date Let's suppose if the document date is, is different in the sense like if the document date is 25th, 12th, 2018 in the sense December and posting date is 02nd, 01st, 2019. So look at here. Now what will happen? Which date will be considered by system? If it is document date, then this particular invoice or document is going to be due on 31st of December. Whereas if the system is going to consider baseline date as a posting date, then this particular invoice is going to be due and at the end of January, that is called 31st January, it is going to be due. So here we have to give the baseline date also any month it depends upon client whichever they are saying we can select here it's not our decision so select posting date or document date here right and press enter press enter so that this explanation is going to be updated automatically i think the connection got broken so i'll have to log in once again and <clears throat> we'll repeat this configurations and we'll save it these things are required guys okay still it is buffering itself so let me join here now once again obbh and new entry give your tst1 fixed days means 31 okay here 31 means at the end of the month right additional month zero because at the end of current month itself right baseline date is also required that i have already explained press enter now look at here so Explanations payable immediately due net. So don't look at this one. Look at this one. Baseline date on end of the month, right? Look at here, guys. System is not saying that baseline date is like 31st of every month. The moment we have given the last day of a particular month, month. In the sense, 31st. What is the highest days in a month? That is 31 only. That one we have given. So system automatically, you know, consider this baseline date. So just copy and paste it here in the, this one descriptions and 
let me perform a testing here for this terms of payment and then i'll correlate this days limit then you guys will be having a perfect understanding right so let me save it we have defined uh, we will just perform testing and then after we are going to see here about this day limit now we'll do one thing we need to create one more session and uh, use transaction code fd60 to post an invoice so we'll check here itself let's suppose we'll give an vendor number here okay and no amounts because we are not going to post a transaction simply we have to check our terms of payment is working perfectly or not so look at here i'll give a different invoice date okay meanwhile i'll just do one thing guys i'll have to do one more setting somebody has already defined a validation rule here but you guys are quite new for that so some message will appear so let me do one thing let me check yeah it is active so i'll deactivate and then i'll save it so that there won't be any messages okay this validation whatever i said that topic will come later there will be very nice explanations for this one also and it's a very important topic guys 98 percent of the people are having uh, you know lots of confusion in that also anyway that is a separate topic so once we start i'll let you know what is that all about now here uh let me refresh refresh in the sense use the same transaction code once again and here give the same vendor number now click on payment tab before payment tab here we are going to change we have to give a different document date and posting date so that you'll come to know which one is being considered so of course anyway invoice date and posting date let's suppose invoice date is 25th 12 or is i'll give a future date 25th 12 is the invoice date that is your document date right and posting date i said like 0 2nd 01 2019 right and then click on payment press enter <laughs> click on payment and here give your terms of payment tst1 and press enter so look at here look at here guys which date has been considered by system system has considered this posting date as a baseline date okay and if system is going to consider this posting date as a baseline date, then what is happening this invoice will be due whichever invoice we, we post with this conditions that is with this conditions in the sense by using tst1 terms of payment those invoices are going to be due on which date so look at here here is the due date in this field this is the due date 31st Jan 2019 at the same time if if in baseline date baseline date if you're going to select your posting date sorry document date isn't it if you're going to select your document date then what will happen system will system will consider this date this is your document date invoice date is nothing but document date already have given already have given an explanation on this right in the previous system so if you are going to if system is going to consider if we have we have selected baseline data as an invoice date then what is happening system is going to calculate again the due date from this this date will be considered and what is the end of in the date of this, uh, what to say, uh, December month. So that is 31st December itself. So here it will be 31st 12, 2019. It means whichever terms of payment we have defined is working perfectly. So what was the requirement, guys? The requirement was which are, whichever the invoices are getting posted in a particular month, those invoices should be due, should be due 
at the end of the month. This is called fixed day stops of payment. A complete lecture was given in the previous season. Now, we'll proceed further from this topic itself. Now there is a requirement from vendor and that vendor is going to split the same terms of payment into two part. Okay, the vendor is vendor has split it and even I'll show you one more thing guys. Let's suppose let's suppose here come here and use this every 60 once again and I have given 31st right here. <coughs> 31st 31st means what at the end of the month system is going to consider at the end of the month So even if you perform testing you'll be having some kind of questions in your mind What will happen if we are going to give 30, you know, if, if the invoice belongs to uh, February month the system is going to make it due on 31st of February But 31st is not there, right? We are having either 28 or 29 So why not to perform testing right now from this February also, right? Give a date on February Okay, give this one and give a same date because this baseline date already I have shown you guys testing and it's working fine. So give a same date here in posting it also and you just check the click here on payment tab, click here on payment tab, press enter and give the terms of payment TST1 and press enter and look at here what is the in date of this February month? 28. So 28. So it is it has considered by system it means it is working perfectly and this is how it is going to work in real time also now now we'll talk about day limit okay day limit lots of different different definitions have been given guys okay forget about those definitions and all because even whichever the definitions are whichever definitions you are finding on google even there are several definitions given by students also. So you guys will be quite confused. So always follow the definitions which I am saying. Okay. It is quite simple and quite easy. And if you are having understanding, then no need of mugging up those definitions. I have seen there was a comment given on my uh, YouTube video. Somebody said like about days in area. He said like this should be the definitions. And it was definitions just he copied from Google and pasted over there, right? So it might confuse other also, isn't it? So anyway, that is. So the thing is like if you are going to uh, take any definitions from Google and there is nothing wrong in that. But the problem is there are total, you know, several words together is going to make a sentence. Let's suppose a definition consists definitions consist consist of 20 25 words all together Then it is going to be a complete sentence and that complete sentence sentence is a definition But out of whichever 20 words are there even if you forgotten two or three words during interview while explaining this to the to your interviewer if you missed out three two three words then this entire definition is going to be changed and you are going to get a negative mark so why to mug up something and then you know answering the what is say questions and all if you're having understanding then don't no need to you know mug up and all you can create your own definitions and that is going to be acceptable everywhere people will anyway we, we come to know whatever you're explaining that whether you're having understanding or not now so we are talking about this terms of payment and in that also what i'm explaining that what is the use of what is the use of days limit look at here day limit is zero right now okay so what i have explained till now i have explained that the requirement is whichever the invoices are there those invoices whichever like a particular month invoices are going to be due on let's suppose here it will be give me zero two and here it will be 28 okay so now what is happening a particular whichever invoices are posting in a current month that is going to be due at the end of that particular month itself now so in order to understand the day limit what we have to do 
the same terms of payment, whichever we have defined, is going to split into two parts. Okay, now vendor is saying that whichever invoices, let's suppose, whichever invoices are going to be posted from first, let's suppose, till 15th. Those invoices should be due on 15th itself. It means first 15 days of invoices. This is your first 15 days from first to 15th, right? First 15 days invoices are supposed to be due on 15th of the current month. It's not, I'm just quoting an example of January, right? First 15 days of invoices are supposed to be due on 15th of current month. And the next 15th, 15 or 16 days, like from 16th, 01, 2019 to, let's suppose, 31st, then so these invoices are going to be due on 31st Jan it means at the end of the month 31st Jan I mean to say at the end of the month just now I have shown you guys this 31st means system is going to consider at the end of the month itself right so now what is happening this fixed days terms of payment I have quoted one more example right that this January month invoices are going to be due at the end of January, February month is going to be due. Invoices are going to be due at the end of February like that. So the same conditions has been splitted. And vendor is saying that the first half of the month, whichever invoice belongs to the first half of the month should be due on the 15th of that particular month. And the next half of the month, it means from 16th, to 31st should be due at the end of the month. End of the month means at the end of current month, right? So what we are going to do? In that case, we have to define only one terms of payment. We are going to define only one terms of payment. Like let's suppose now I'm going to define TST2, test2, two, 2. Same code we are going to give because here it is same terms of payment two conditions two different conditions are there so give single code but in days limit we are going to give like for this in first condition what is happening till 15th of the month right so here we have to give 15 okay Till 15th of the month, whichever invoices are going to be due, those whichever invoices are going to be posted, right? So here in days limit, we are going day limit, we are going to give 15th. And then from 15th already we have defined. So what is the next date of 15th, guys? It is 16th. So 16th till 31st, in the sense at the end of the month. So here we are going to give 31st. And this invoices, these this both invoices are going to be due on which date. So this is going to be due on 15th. So where we are going to give this 15th guys that I'll let you know. Now here come back. I guess it's gone. So let me log in once again. <coughs> I'll, I'll show you guys practically. Okay. It's pretty simple. If you practice once or twice, you will be able to understand this logic. Nothing to be worried about, guys. Nothing is difficult here. Okay, so OBB it. Now click on new entry and here terms of payment is what 
So now we are going to give TST two test two. So till fifteenth of the current month, whatever invoices are getting posted <coughs> till fifteenth of the current month, those invoices are going to be due on fifteenth itself. Let's suppose or sixteenth also, whatever. So till fifteenth of the current month invoices are going to be due on 15th itself. So what is happening here? We have to give like till 15th of the current month, whichever invoices are posted, that is going to be due on which date? 15th itself. So here 15th of current month. So current month means additional month. Nothing here. Simply do not need to enter zero and all because it is blank. Blank means system is going to consider zero itself, right? Now, do we need to define a baseline date for this one also? Of course, we have to define a baseline date and the example already I have quoted previously. If the document date and posting date is having two different months like document date is falling in December and posting date is there in January, then what will happen? 15th of what? Right? So <coughs> system will be confused. Now here any any one you can take document date or posting date. I have been habituated of you know, taking this document date. Sorry, posting date. So anyone you can uh, you know select. It's not like there is no question that why you are selecting only posting date always, right? You can select even document date also. Okay. And what is the logic behind this entry date and all? This is already explained in the previous season. So I'm not going to go in that details. So what we have done guys, in day limit, we are going to give 15. It means till 15th of a month. Till 15th of a month of the month, whatever invoices are getting posted, those invoices are going to be due on 15th itself and on which month? Current month. Current month means zero. It means blank only. Okay. It will be it should be blank. Blank equals to zero. If somebody says like till 15th of the current month, which you know, whichever invoices are getting posted, that will be due on 15th of next month. Then in additional month, we are going to give one. It means current plus one, right? But here the case is in current month 15th itself, right? So current month plus zero, current only, right? Now, so. <laughs> Then just press enter. Now look at here baseline date on 15th of the month. Just copy. You can paste it. You can paste it here. Okay. Now just save it. So what we have done, guys? We have set up the first condition. What is the first conditions? Till 15th of the month, whichever invoices are posting, getting posted, that is going to be due. That is going to be due on which date it is going to be due on 15th itself. Now second condition also we have to we have to configure and what is that now till 31st of it must it means like from 16th onwards until the end of the month whichever invoices are getting posted that should be due on at the end of the month itself. So now what will happen guys for that. For that, again, click on back button and in the same terms of payment, now we are just going to change the day limit. Change the day limit in the sense we are not going to edit this one. Just select this and copy. So same terms of payment. Now we are going to give the second condition that it is till 31st. 31st means system is considering at the end of the month. Okay, and already I have shown this. In the this previous configurations, right? So don't be confused. Till 31st from 16th. Okay, because this already we have given this conditions already we have given now. So till 15th we have already given. So what is the next date of 15th, guys? That is 16th only. So from 16th till 31st, whichever invoices are going to be posted, those invoices will be due on 31st of which month? 31st of current month. It means keep it blank and just remove this one and press enter. So now what is happening guys? 
look at here and just copy, you know double click on this and you can copy this one and you can paste it here okay so now we have defined our terms of payment okay and that is tst2 now here system automatically is going to identify we are having only one terms of payment but in that itself we have defined two conditions okay in one terms of payment itself we have defined two conditions till 15th whatever invoices are getting posted that is going to be due on 15th and till 31st it means at the end of the month from 16th till the end of the month whichever invoices are going to be posted that is going to be due at the end of the month itself now so why not to perform a testing and we'll see whether it is working fine or not right so let me do one thing guys now now here we'll do one thing let me perform the testing part okay and then then here so use fb60 use fb60 and okay so we'll give like we have I've given quoted example of january and now only four days or five days are there for new year so we'll quote an example of january itself right so we'll do one thing now so we'll take this 14th 14th okay okay we made a mistake once again fb60 guys i press enter so that is why now i'll just quote i'll just give 14th and even in posting date also i'll give the same okay give your a vendor number and press enter now which terms of payment we are going to use guys it is tst2 so i have given 14th here 14th means what case 14th means it should fall in between this range right 14th of jan is falling under this range so those invoices should be due on which date 15th of jan right so look at here give terms of payment tst tst2 and press enter now look at here Oh my God, why it is taking 15th of, and we just press enter. Have we made any mistake here? Oh, yes. We have given uh, 2018, right? So I have to, even still it is working fine, right? Still it is working fine. 14th, 0, 1, 2019. Still it is working fine because in that case also it has considered our terms of payment click on payment tab press enter and here give tst2 and press enter look at here it is going to be due on 15th of january okay tst2 right so what is happening it is falling under first condition it is falling under this condition okay now the same terms of payment once again we are going to use and now look at this how the condition number two is going to work so we have to do nothing guys we have to do nothing simply 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 we are going to change the date we are going to change the date okay now let's suppose we'll take example of 16 01 2019 okay and copy and paste here Click on payment, press enter, enter. So look at here, the moment we have given 16th, just give the thumbs up payment TST2 and press enter. The moment we have given 16, now system has considered the end of the month, right? It means second conditions. Now look at here, the terms of payment is only one that is TST2. Okay, and based on this terms of payment, system is going to follow both 
both conditions are working perfectly so guys here what will happen this is the requirement let's suppose given by your client or this is the requirement given by vendor that to the tata motor that these are the cases till 15th of every month invoices i need payment on 15th itself and from 16th to end of the month whichever invoices we are going to send those payment we receive on 31st itself it means it is going to be due on 31st so what is happening tata motor is going to raise a requirement it means they will consult or contact their consultant that this is the requirement i need a new terms of payment so what is happening we are going to set up a new terms of payment one terms of payment but two conditions we have given right now what about the end user guys end user has done nothing instead of doing the data entry data entry in the sense simply they have given vendor number they are going to give invoice date posting date whatever is there gl code amount reference number these things they have given and this terms of payment let's suppose already assigned with the vendor master so by default it is going to appear and automatically it is going to consider the baseline date and all right end user has to do nothing with this and they don't know what configurations we have done right so this is the difference between you guys and end user end user means only data entry job nothing there is no analysis no configurations nothing at all isn't it which is why consultants are highly paid jobs and which is why people are crazy right so now here look at here how much things we have done to define one terms of payment and even testing also we should know we have performed testing also it's working fine okay so end users they don't know the logic what we have done how we have defined this terms of payment because of that these two conditions are going to work but you guys are consultant so you know the logic now so uh, this is the use of this is the use of day limit if you want to check for any other date you can give other date also even if you give 16th uh, 17th 18th 28th 25th 27th even if you give 31st of jan also system is going to consider 31st of jan the same if we are going to give for the same if you are going to give 16th of february then here the due date will be 28 28 February will be the due date because what is the end of the month in February that is 28 automatically system is going to consider how it is going to happen that is already this this example I have already quoted in the previous one in this one right so now this is the use of day limit day limit is also going to be used for fixed days terms of payment itself guys but in that if we are having split condition split conditions means one terms of payment is having two conditions half of the month invoices are going to be due on the 15th of current month and remaining half of the month the invoices are going to be due on at the end of the month in that case we have to define one terms of payment with two conditions and those two conditions we are going to specify we are going to give in day limit itself isn't it so this is how you can explain you can quote an example and if you're going to give this explanations 100 percent it is acceptable right instead of searching some definitions from google and all so look at here guys how many things are there to learn in one particular terms of payment the moment i say terms of payment uh, people think like uh, or anybody if anybody says terms of oh it's very small topic here yeah, what is there in that see how many classes we have given for this one right for one single talk so there are for whichever topics are there none of the topics are small today itself I have seen on Facebook there was a comment somebody was written something like I want to go for uh, SAP FICO online training kindly suggest me uh, institutions or something and the very first comment I saw given by somebody that don't go for this it is waste of don't go for SAP training it's waste of money right so I'm telling you guys Never look at such negative comments and all because losers will always talk about negative only, isn't it? See, if, if you talk about SAP training, people feels like, let's suppose there are lots of people who are over, who is overconfident. They know, I know how to configure terms of payment. I know how to configure automatic payment program. I know how to configure validation, substitutions, or whichever the topics are there. Area configuration doesn't matter. 
isn't it? If you go for interview, there are several questions I can derive here only from this terms of payment, isn't it? What is the what is the use of this baseline date? What do you mean by baseline date? Isn't it? Now, uh, let's suppose <coughs> what is the use of this day limit? Have you defined any fixed days terms of payment or not? Isn't it? If you have defined what was the conditions? Now, what is the use of this block key which appears while defining the terms of payment? What is the impact if you are going to apply a block at terms of payment? Now, if you talk about blocking and all, then again, there are lots of things going to appear. If you apply even like what is the impact if you are going to apply a block at GL level? What is the imp impact if you are going to apply a block at vendor level? What is the impact if you are going to apply a block at customer level? Right? And what is the impact if you are going to block, apply a block at invoice level also? So where is the configurations in these things, guys? There is no configurations. Here, you need to have some understanding. And if your faculties are going to cover these all things, then only you guys will be having understanding. And then only you will be able to understand whatever the questions I am asking. So there are, it's, it's training doesn't mean that it is going to be restricted till configurations only. Every organizations are having configuration document. And if you feel that you become a you know good consultant while having this configurations knowledge and all, then even you are not going to get zero rating also with those things. Okay. So people, what people think, they think that I know all the configurations, I become a perfect consultant. But once they go for interviews and all, then they will come to know what is their real price and what is their real worth. They'll keep on getting rejected because interviewers are not going to ask how to configure this terms of payment. I've asked several times the questions. What do you mean by terms of payment? And what do you mean by baseline date or is whatever the question I ask the similar questions, right? Uh, always most of the time people are saying it's OBB8 is the transaction code by which we are going to define terms of payment. So guys just think twice. Interviewer is not asking how to create a terms of payment interviewer is asking why to create terms of payment so always always think about why and as i said don't look at this negative comments and all and don't talk to the losers don't ask any suggestions from losers because always they will try to discourage you okay so that's all in this session guys and still we are having few more things to discuss so not in this session, those things will be discussed in the next session. Okay, so that's all for today and that's all in this session.